Eric, thank you. Right now, we're going to bring in outnumbered co-host and former White House press secretary, Kaylee McEnany. We're, uh, Kaylee, uh, good to see you. And by the way, earlier today on Fox News Live, we referenced a poll uh, showing the undeclared voters in New Hampshire, the Republican primary there that everybody's talking about. And 41 uh, percent supported the former president and 49 support Haley. But can we assume that Trump will gain more independent voters there in New Hampshire? You know, we'll see. I think right now what everyone's looking at is, is what you've been reporting, which is DeSantis dropping out. And look, Ramaswamy dropped out, and I, I realize he was only bringing in about 5 percent, give or take. However, Ramaswamy dropped out after Iowa on the night of the Iowa caucuses last Monday. Since then, there were three polls, and each of those three polls showed Donald Trump at 50 percent or higher. So it appears that last little percent from Ramaswamy went over to Donald Trump. I suspect what you will see here on Tuesday is the 6 percent DeSantis was bringing in. And it's not all, you know, a homogenous group. There will be people who break off and stay home or go for perhaps Nikki Haley. Um, but you will see, I think, perhaps this bolster Trump, give a tailwind behind him. I still think Nikki Haley picks up that independent vote. 40 percent of this state is the independent undeclared vote. Um, but can she pull off John McCain numbers? John McCain in 2000 beat George W. Bush, and it was with independence. So the big question for Nikki Haley is, can you pick up that group that puts enough of a tailwind behind you to eclipse the group of Ramaswamy and DeSantis voters that I believe will be backing Trump? Well, if that is her, her plight, if you will, Nikki Haley is already saying, hey, listen, guys, I'm the conservative here. I was a Tea Party governor. This is who you want. You want to return to something that's more, quote unquote, normal in terms of the Republican policy, et cetera. So do you think that particular message, uh, Kaylee, will not only resonate with in independents, uh, Republicans in New Hampshire, but also going forward, because we have to look ahead, and that's what she's looking at, and everybody else is, as to they're sort of expecting that perhaps Trump has such momentum that he's going to derail her train sooner than later. What do you see? Yeah, and, and that's the big question, because, look, Nikki Haley's staring down South Carolina, her home state. Her home state now shows 52 percent supporting Donald Trump. So if Trump has a good night in New Hampshire, he is very likely to have a good night in South Carolina. Now, if I'm the folks on Nikki Haley's team, what I'm saying to her is this. You now have a two-person race. You have Trump. You have Nikki Haley. You're looking at Super Tuesday, 16 states coming to you in March. Twelve of those 16 states allow independents to vote. So if you have a good showing in New Hampshire, you're still likely going to lose your home state. No one wants to lose your home state. You're looking at two, Super Tuesday, where it's a two-person race, and 12 of the 16 allow independents to vote. But the Trump momentum is huge, and especially if he gets north of 50 percent, that would be a big deal. Just winning New Hampshire, to put it in perspective, would be an enormous deal. No Republican candidate in an open primary has won both Iowa and New Hampshire since 1976. So. Just winning is big. Winning a majority is big. But Nikki Haley may be in this for the long haul. She's wanted a two-person race. That's what she's called for. Well, now she's got it. And can she capitalize and make gains on that two-person race? And, Kaylee, you mentioned Super Tuesday, because so far we've been focus focusing on New Hampshire and Iowa. Super Tuesday is a different ball game. Do you think abortion will come back into the forefront? Because that is something that is on the minds of the independent voters. Look, in a Republican primary, likely not. Yes, you're right, among that independent group, yes. But make no mistake, Arthel, I, abortion is going to be one of the key issues. It might not be, you know, number one, number two, or number three in terms of polling. But this is one of those wedge issues that you point to, where Republicans have lost every single ballot initiative on abortion post-Roe, every single one. Kansas, Ohio, the list goes on. And abortion is going to be in about 10 states on the ballot. Florida looks likely, among other states. So this issue is not going away. The Republican messenger on this issue needs to speak from a place of compassion. We are pro-baby as a party, and that's a beautiful and wonderful thing. But you have to be pro-mother. And DeSantis, you know, for his campaign, everyone's going to write their postmortems of his campaign. But I would urge the analyst to go back and look at how he spoke about abortion in the last two weeks, particularly. He talked about maternal health care. He talked about making child care products tax-free in Florida. We as a party 
must be pro-mother uh, because we're looking down a very dim election road should we not change our rhetoric on abortion. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.